Hi everyone, my name is Billy and welcome to Casting the Net. This is a new youth-led series hosted by Teens for Teens, exploring the breadth and depth of our online worlds. In each episode, we'll be casting the net wide in order to learn about the opportunities, but also challenges that the internet brings and hear from many experts all around the globe. From connecting with our friends, to listening to music, gaming, shopping, watching videos, or even doing homework, we spend a lot of time online. Even sometimes this amount of time can cause conflict between families or friends. We know that there are pros and cons to being online, and that includes what we are doing, who we are doing it with, and for how long. Research from Trinity College Dublin shows that striking the right balance in the amount of time that one spends online can be good for teenagers' well-being. And to find out more about this, I'm going to be chatting to Professor Richard Late, who is the co-author of the study. Good to meet you, Billy. Nice to meet you, Richard. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about the research? Yeah, sure. So the piece of research that we're talking about today is part of a wider program of research that I do at Trinity. My, my, I'm a sociologist by background, so I should really introduce myself, shouldn't I? I'm, I'm Richard Late. I'm Professor of Sociology at Trinity College in Dublin. Uh, so that's where I'm sitting at the moment, looking at Trinity Front Gate in the middle of Dublin. And um, I run a, uh, a research program called Team Path. And uh, we call it Team Path because it focuses on teens, that's adolescents, um, in their sort of teenage years. But um, we're using data on young people from basically uh, birth onward, really. And um, although we focus on teens, we look at it, uh, what's known longitudinally. So we follow them through their teenage years, all the way up to into their 20s, actually. And if you've come across these data that we used before, it, it's called Growing Up in Ireland. If you go to www.growingup.ie, it gives you all of the information, all the lowdown on Growing Up in Ireland. It's a, it's a study funded by governments, cost the Irish government 41 million euros to date to collect all this data and uh, so we're, we're making use of that to study um, young people's experiences in adolescence and teenagehood and particularly their health and uh, both physical and mental health outcomes so that's that's where my interest in this area comes from i'm looking at um, young people's mental health outcomes uh, and the reason I'm doing health, even though I'm a sociologist, is because your social environment can contribute really very significantly to your mental and physical health. Uh, so who you're in contact with, the kind of relationships you have with them, um, that social environment that you have is really influential on your health outcomes. So this piece of research that we're talking about today, which is about uh, we sometimes call it digital engagement, but let's call it sort of screen time, online participation, online engagement. Um, this is part of that wider program of research, looking at different adolescent and youth behaviours. How much time we spend online, like what kind of impact does it actually have on our well-being as teenagers? The simple answer to that is we're not entirely sure. OK, so um, we have we were asking questions of young people from age nine, in fact, we asked them before that, from uh, about age five, actually, um, we're asking young people about their time online and their activities online. So that's one source of, of information. That's kind of self-report. And then we have another source of information, which is if we get them to carry out time diaries. So they, they keep a diary. And then every 15 minutes, they note down what they're doing and who they're with. And from those different sources, it looks like um, quite a people are spending quite a lot of time online. So um, amongst young women, it's about two fifths of them. So that's about 40 percent are spending three or more hours a day during the week online. And that's that's rising to over 50 percent at the weekend. Uh, amongst boys, it's a bit less. Uh, amongst young men and boys, it's about a third are spending three hours more. But that's really just an estimate, OK? And what, what we know is that it's actually hard to differentiate when you're online, when you're not online, in a sense, isn't it? Because quite often 
I, I've, you know, I have three kids myself. Um, my, my youngest is 15 at this stage. And um, I, she carries her phone around everywhere. It's in her hand the whole time. So essentially she's almost online the whole time because there's notifications going off and she's looking at her phone. Uh, it's not like it used to be when the internet was tethered to a desk on a computer and you had to go to the computer and log on. Um, those are the old days, you know, we don't do that now. The, the invention of the smartphone since what, 2006, seven, when the, when the iPhone came out, that's been a revolution. That's kind of, that has made the internet truly mobile. It's in our hands all the time. So our estimates of the amount of time that people spend online are simply that, they're estimates. They're, they're not in any sense a cast iron number. Nonetheless, I have to say this, okay, all data are in, in many respects an estimate, largely. Yeah. Um, so what we can do though is we look, we look for patterns and we look for variation in the population. So everybody might be wrong about the amount of time they tell us they're online. But nonetheless, um, we can look at the patterns within the population to tell us about the consequences of more time online compared to less. So the absolute numbers seem to be quite high, but they could be higher. Yeah. Does that answer your question? It does indeed, thank you. <laughs> um, and then the research also showed that not spending enough time online can have a negative effect. So where does that link in and what kind of risks are we really looking at? Yeah, okay, so there, there are kind of, there's a history to this, all right? So, you would think, wouldn't you, that the internet would be a really good thing. So the having the internet in your hand, you'd think would mean that nobody would ever be lonely because you'd be able to contact anybody anytime, wouldn't you? Be able to go online. You'd be able to ring them if you wanted to, but you could also do email. You could do your, you know, our, our sort of um, video calls these days, email. There's instant messaging. There's any number of different ways you could contact people. So you'd think that this would be a fantastic thing. No, you know, loneliness no more. Um, similarly, nobody would ever get bored, would they? Because you'd have this thing in your hand where you could go off and get all the information you ever wanted about the world, really, via your smartphone. So it does look like a really good thing. And you would think that having access to it would improve people's well-being. Uh, it would make them happy, you'd think, and it would make their mental well-being better. Um, but over time, uh, after 2010 largely, there began to be the emergence of some data in, on, uh, out into the public sphere suggesting that all might not be well and that actually we might, this might be contributing to bad uh, outcomes for young people. Um, so there's, there was in, there's increasing evidence that um, levels of mental health are worsening amongst young people. So if you look at rates of anxiety, depression-like symptoms, psychological distress, um, across countries, not uniformly, but across countries across the world, we're seeing increases in those amongst young people, particularly young women, and particularly amongst young teenage women. So between about 12, 17, 18, we're seeing really steep increases in these kinds of symptoms, anxiety, depression. And these increases are starting from about 20, 2009, 2010, which is a period which, as we've already discussed, is kind of synonymous with the rise of mobile smartphones and the access to the internet. So people have jumped to the conclusion that the, these two things are, are strongly related. You know, that the worsening mental health is all to do with increasing rates of online time amongst young people. Um, and there's been some, some people commenting on this, people like Jean Twenge in the US, a US psychologist, she used to look at generational changes. And now she looks at really spending a lot of time looking at the effect of the internet and web on young people. And she was publishing articles about how smartphones had destroyed a generation, you know, apocalyptic stuff about the effect of the internet on young people, real worrying stuff. You know, if Gene is right, then this is something that we need to do something about because this looks like it's having a terrible effect. Now, of course, the world is often more complex than that. OK, just because mental health is worsening and we do seem to have very good evidence that mental health is worsening amongst young people. Just because 
that was that worsening is synonymous with when smartphones arrived doesn't necessarily mean that smartphones caused it you know uh, as any statistician will tell you correlation does not equal causation okay so just because mental health got worse when smartphones come out doesn't mean that smartphones did the made the problem there are a lot of other things which are happening you know as as you might realize um, there's a lot of young people out there who are homeless or finding it very difficult to find housing you know and there are other families that there are you know even young people living with their families are finding it difficulty um, there's lots of difficulties around the in our societies around poverty and around sort of other stresses that might be on young people there was that small thing called the pandemic covid pandemic which also impacted on people as well so you know we can't necessarily draw a straight line from some from smartphones over to uh to mental well health uh mental ill health so um we have been and a number of a lot of other people have been trying to sort out what did it actually have any effect and can we identify what that effect is. And there is increasing evidence that there is indeed an effect that it that smartphones and time online, particularly, and the kinds of activities you're doing online do seem to have a, 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 an impact on, on people's well-being. Now, to answer your question, I know I've been talking for a long while, but to answer your question, can it also be a beneficial thing? People didn't really look at that so much. And that was part of our research was to see, can there be, what are there some positive effects for being online? Okay, because if you think about it, being online is and um, communicating via the internet and the web, they're just another source of communication, aren't they? It's like a telephone. It's, it's like any other way of contacting people. And we know talking to people generally is beneficial for our well-being. You know, we're social animals, human beings, aren't we? We like to be with other people, by and large. Um, and so it might be that there's some positives to this. And indeed, when we looked, what we found is that when people were spending no time online or very little amounts of time online, that actually was associated with worse mental health in terms of uh, certain symptoms of depression, internalizing kinds of conditions, and particularly externalizing conditions. So these are people who, you know, experiencing hyperactivity, inattention, this kind of stuff. So to answer your question, yes, not being online can itself be problematic, because if you think about it, if you're not online at all, you're not gaining those opportunities to mix with other people that might actually be beneficial you might miss out on all of those events that are going on or all those opportunities to have somebody kind of reassure you that you're feeling bad but it's okay you know and getting social support so yes not having access to um, online the world or not using online communication might itself be bad but we do see that as the amount of time online goes up you also get an increase in some of these symptoms as well. And there's a very big acceleration in the symptoms after about three or more hours a day. I suppose it's all about finding the right balance between online and offline, isn't it? Like if... Yeah, that can be part of it. Because of course, one of the questions here is, if there is a, a downside to being online, it might not just be about the length of time you're online. It might be about what you're doing online as well, mightn't it? Is there a difference between if you're doing educational stuff or just like casually scrolling for hours on end? How does that change like the impact on us? Very good question, Billy. And uh, this is something that we're still trying to get at, really, in terms of how how being online um, impacts mental health and physical health to a certain extent. So um, if you think about uh, time online, all right, um, there are, you can be doing lots of different activities online. Some of that will be quite passive. You know the way that you might be just reading material online, like you could be using like a book, couldn't you? Just reading stuff. Websites uh, are like that. Um, but you can, of course, also be um, looking at other people's responses and on and time online. And what, what we found is um, that the reason for, for why you're going online is quite important in terms of the, uh, the, the kinds of outcomes that it has for you. Think of it like this, all right? Say 
I'm having I'm having problems with my friends and my you know the people of, uh, that I'm around. I'm not getting on with them so well, or maybe they're not talking to me, or maybe there's even something like bullying going on. Okay, if I go online and I'm I'm simply browsing through online materials, um, looking for connection, but not actually having any kind of uh, dynamic interaction with people, you know, as in like a discussion, then that seems to be associated with worse outcomes. So um, if if you get young people that are feeling more alienated from their peers, um, that, that tends to be a sign that what they're going online for is to try to make contact, um, but they're not really managing it. And in that situation, that can that can lead to this kind of slightly ex excessive use obsessive might be a better word for it um, where you're constantly comparing yourself to other people and you're trying to work out what they're thinking about you what are they saying about me what are they saying to each other trying to get into their minds trying to work out who's talking to who and what they're talking about so that can be quite negative um, on the other hand if you're going online a lot and you are talking to your friends and you're having chat, you know, and you're having banter online, that is actually quite a positive thing. And what you're getting there is often quite high quality kind of social interaction that has real benefits for us. The, the, the jury's out and we don't have very good evidence about whether meeting people face to face is more beneficial than being online. Um, that, that we're still sort of trying to work out the answer to that one. Um, but what we do know is that if you're having face-to-face uh, -face interaction online or, you know, so social interaction online, then that can be really beneficial. And so what, why you go online and the kind of things you're doing do make a big difference. There's also a sort of a generalized theory here, uh, which we call displacement. Okay, so displacement is the idea that when you go online, you spend a lot of time online, what you're doing is you're displacing other forms of behavior that might be more beneficial. So one, say face-to-face -face contact is better, better for you than in uh, online interaction. Then if I'm constantly online rather than seeing people face-to-face, -face, then I'm, there might be a displacement effect of face-to-face of -face contact that makes me feel worse, mightn't it? Like I say, evidence is out on that one, we're still counting. Um, but you also find displacement effects in other ways. So um, a lot of young people have their phones with them all the time and they're looking at their phones before they go to bed. And that means that the phone itself or the, the online content can kind of slow down uh, transition to sleep. You know, so you might have sleep problems or it just might stop you sleeping because you're up all night looking at the Internet. Um, when we did the analysis of symptoms for people who are high users, what we often found was that it was sleep that was the major driver of depression-like symptoms. So feeling a bit low, feeling disconnected, um, feeling a bit depressed, that, that seemed to be associated with getting less sleep. And it was the online time yeah. that was doing that. So that's that's a generalized displacement effect. But of course, being online can also have other effects. Do you, do you remember I just mentioned earlier on about where you're browsing through stuff? Well, there can also be an effect here of social comparisons. So we all make social comparisons all the time, don't we? You know, like, you, you know, you see your friends and they've got a new pair of trousers and you think, yeah. oh, that's a lovely pair of trousers. I'd love to have a pair of trousers like that. They must be so much, you know, better off than me. And they're so much happier than me because they've got these trousers. But it seems that a lot of these social comparisons are much more difficult if they're done online because they're contextless, you know, that way. And what you often find as well is that uh, people online are curating, the word is, uh, a lifestyle for you. You know, like they're trying to represent their best selves. And so they're very smiley and they've got lots of friends about them and they're wearing their nicest clothes and they're, you know, they're, they're doing lots of really entertaining stuff. And that, those social comparisons can have quite a big impact on self-esteem particularly for those people, as I was saying earlier on, who are looking for connection, who, who are feeling lonely and, and want connection. Sorry, that was a very long-winded answer. You're all right. That was, it was brilliant. It makes total sense.
Join us in part two, where we continue our chat, including discussing if there is a magic number for the right amount of time to spend online and what needs to be done to build on this research.